Good morning, and thank you very much for coming into the African Indigenous Traditional Music Workshop. I'm going to be making different instruments. My first instrument that I'm going to make for you is Uwadi Bo, which is this is Uwadi. And the other instrument that I'm going to make uh, is called the Nyanga Pen Pipe. This is the Nyanga Pen Pipe. And the other instrument that I'm going to make, I'm going to make an African flute where you don't spend no money, but you can just pick it up maybe somewhere on all the dirty pins and so on. This we call it umchingo. These are the three main instruments that I'm going to be making. But now I would like to start with Uwadi. And my name is Dizu Zungula Mzikantu Plakis. I'm a lecturer at the University of Cape Town in the African department. Here we go. The name of the wood is called the black water, originally from Australia. It came here to suck water in the places where there was too much water. And first of all, this wood, you need to scrape it to look good. Once you've got that color, then I'll take a sandpaper, then I'll sand it, I'll make it so smooth without nothing of these tones. Thereafter, it's gonna, it's gonna look very good. And after that, then I'll vanish, because wood, you need to vanish. Just like a baby, you need to feed the wood. You don't just make an instrument and then you don't take care of it. Now, I've got groove here and there. It's for this wire because now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to put this wire into this groove, then I'm going to twist it, yes? And when I twist, some people, they use pliers to do this, but I've been doing this for all my life, and now my fingers are so strong, just like it pliers. Now, look at this groove now. I'm going to put this wire into this groove. There it goes. Then I'm going to turn it upside down. This is my top, that's my bottom. Now, this is how it's going to look. But now I've got to bend this to give me a shape of a bow. Because the instrument is called Uadi bow. Here. Then you've got to bend it gently, not too much. Then here we go. This is all sometimes, sometimes this is, this thing happen. Now, okay. Uh -huh. I've got it now. Done. Because usually we always do this. Um, either in the sand or in the grass. Beautiful. But me, how I test, I always put the bow in my mouth. Then it will tell me exactly what type of a color brush I must put. Here's the calabash. If you look at this calabash, there's a hole. And also in this calabash, also there's a hole. But on this one, there's a bead inside. And this bead, it helped me when I tied the calabash into the stick. Because if you don't have that bead inside, you'll never be able to tie the calabash into the stick. Now, this is how I do it. In between my leg, calabash under the wood. Now I'll be using method that I've learned from Boy Scouts when I was a Boy Scout, using a lot of different knotting, ship shank, and all this other knotting. It really helped us because we learned so much when we were at the Boy Scouts. Because now, without 
those kind of methods, you won't be able to do what I'm doing, but you can do it your own way. But it's going to be totally different to the one that I'm making. Now, here's a bow with a calabash, but it's not complete. It sounds good, but it's not complete. I must cover this part so that the audience must not see that. How I do it, same thing. Then there's my cloth under and then and above. And then I go under. I'm tightening the calabash together with the stick so that the calabash must not move and make the wobbling sound or the crinkling sound, which is not a pleasant sound while we are playing. So the sound must be so beautiful. Now, you can see how e easy it is. But the main thing when you are making what you cannot just take any stick and think that maybe you are going to get the very same sound uh, of the bow. You might use a different stick, and I will use me the, the very beautiful stick of the bow, and the sound will be totally different from yours. So it's better first to know the type of a wood that you are using. Now it's almost done. Then I put this part under so that you don't see. And it's going to look very nice now. Now it's complete. Now I like my niece just to come and demonstrate a bow. Then maybe we'll do a duet together. Don't mind about this one because I'm going to play a different bow with her. So, what? Yes, you can play it. When you look at the bow, the difference is the tuning peg. This bow is an international bow that you can play with all different types of musicians who are playing different genres of music. But this one is typically traditional without no tuning peg. So whoever plays with you, he must take the key from this one. Whereas this one, 
It's easy, you can just tune it. And this is Uadi bow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I would like you to know about this instrument. Uadi bow is an instrument that belongs to women and is played by well-grown women. In the olden days, this instrument, our mothers were using it for the children before they go to bed. As you know, in many traditions, people, they read books for their children, but amongst Kosa speaking people, we play a musical instrument. That is why most people will say that, why African people, they've got all these different rhythms. It's because while we are still in the stomach of our mothers, they play all these different instruments and singing, especially this Uadipo. Because I don't have a breast, and then now I've got my niece next to me, where she's going to demonstrate about the calipers because usually the calipers we cut according to the size of the breast of a person. But I don't measure the breast of women before I start cutting, making the bow. You know, I just look at the breast, then I know exactly what size I could make. And uh, can you just turn Talisa the calipers? Yes. That's how the calipers look. When you look at the calipers, it's big. But when you look at the breast of my sister, you know, and the color pass, it just suits, it fits. And uh, in the olden days, as you know, that in the rural areas, in the Eastern Cape, we never had no gynecologist. And the instrument, it was used mainly for women who could not feel that their kids are moving inside the stomach. And then there's a special rondavel which built for people like that, where I come from, if any of your baby does not move, one other lady, the ladies of the important women of the village, will come and you will lie on the bed, and then what she will do, she will take this very same instrument while you are sleeping, and she will play the instrument into your stomach. The vibration of the string and the color pass, it goes straight into your womb, and thereafter, the kid will start kicking because of the vibration. So you can imagine this instrument was not only made for people to make money, it was made for certain reasons. And the name of the instrument is called Uadi. Uadi is an open part, we call this part Umadi, and the instrument, that is why we call it Uadi. So now she's playing a song which we call it Yaka Yaka. And when I teach the people how to play this music, you've got to count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Keep on going. So there are many different ways of playing a bow. It's not only by striking the stick on the string. You can also bow like...
So there's many ways of playing this ball and also sometimes the other different technique that I've discovered also myself is when you play the ball, I'm not only hitting here, I can also hit here. So Also the other way of playing now, I was playing now so not many ball players do that when they are playing the ball um, because we come from a very talented family that our mothers and fathers were master ball players like one of our aunts you know my father my sisters this is an instrument that we grew up with at home what all right last thing that i would like to add which is very important is the wire the wire is very important sometimes people will just buy any type of wire and you think that is going to work here no you first check the weight of the wood that you've got. After that, you don't take a very thick uh, wire because a thick wire is not going to make any sound unless you are using a very thick stick, then you can. And the most important thing also is that once you use a thick stick, it easily breaks the wood. So you use the string that, you use the wire that suits the wood. Because the problem, you use the thick, wood, thick uh, what you call wire, is going to break. But now you must look at, because if you look at the top, it's very thin, can easily break when you bend it. So that is why you've got to use a thinner string, not very thin, but also all these string they produce different sound for instance um, there is this one this one is like waves I first flatten it F flat thereafter I will take a stick then I will wind on the stick then I will hook somewhere then I will twist to make these waves so when you use this wire, the sound is totally different from this one. When you play, it got another uh, wind sound that is doing. You know, this is like a magical instrument, but only with one string. But there are so many things that you can use. So there's this wire and this one. This is the wire that I flatten it. You can see, you know, this one is flat. Now. I need to twist and make the waves. Our people, we call it the waves because when you play, even you use this on Mkhobe, it sounds totally different and it's beautiful. So that is why making of this musical bow, first test different wires before you say that, no, this one sounds, it might sound nice when you put it, but the minute you start to put the color bars, the sound is going to change. So use different wires and the color bars. Because at times you think that maybe making of this bow, you've got to check the weight of the wood and the color bars that is going to suit this. And you all can only do that by checking after you finishing tightening up the string when you play with your mouth. Now, color bars are different. This one is very light, very light compared to this one, as you can see. So this one, I need a little bit, a thicker wood, then it's gonna sound beautiful. But now this one is a bit thicker, it needs the size of this wood. So color bars does not only work only on a bow, because also sometimes, 
We accompany the bow with this shikere. As you can see, it's also a calabash. And uh, we, in this calabash, there are seeds that come out. There's no fruit whatsoever. There are seeds. Take those seeds and grow them. It's going to grow. But now, growing a calabash, you need a place where it's dry and it's hot. Then you can get a very good calabash. Places like Cape Town, you might get, yes, good calabash. As when you go to Wellington and other places. But around here, calipers don't grow that much. It will grow, but it will be very small and green. So this is Uwadibo. Anything you want to say? tell you about the bow, or the bow. When our mothers play this instrument, this is the instrument that is mostly played at night, not during the day, because you've got to switch off the lights. Because no one wants to look at the breast of the mothers, so they will play this instrument topless, because the harmonic and the, and the overtones are so beautiful when it goes to your flesh. And secondly, Children, they were not also allowed to touch this instrument or to play it. Because every single instrument, you have rules and regulations. You cannot just do anything without being taught or learned from an adult person. So, that is why the mothers with this instrument you don't just touch it and start to play. No, they don't allow you. Up until you reach a certain stage, then you can play the instrument. Because this is played by well-grown women. There is another instrument that is played by only young ladies and women, but not well-grown women. So Uadi plays a very important part among the African history. And um, my problem, I'm afraid that this music is going to die away and is completely dying and fortunately well i started by reviving you know bringing back this music otherwise 
a nation without their own its original roots is just like a tree without roots. So that is why I'm reviving back all these traditional instruments back to the people, especially to the women, because women in this country, they don't get no jobs, nothing and so on, you know. So I feel that women, it's about time for them to start playing this instrument. Making money is not to go and clean the streets and so on. You can make money by making a musical instrument, playing a musical instrument. Thank you very much.